there. Um, numerous athletes now to win express their concern about how them coming out would be reflected by their teammates and by their sport. Was that a fear of yours? I know you come out while you were while you were still swimming, but if you if you were pictured yourself now as coming out, would that be a fear that you would have had, you would you would have within the swimming fraternity? No, not really. I think um, we you know our, our team, the swim team, is, is pretty strong and pretty under understanding. And I think it would be, and we're at that kind of point now, uh, where people would be tremendously supportive if there was to be an athlete that was gay on that team. Um, and it's it's really interesting to see in in the film that we just watched um, how this has changed recently. Um, and you know, it was really. Those pioneers back in the day, that I think, were the, the brave ones that made it easier for everyone that's here. Yeah, I think you're right. And Ian, um, uh, personally, I recall the, the distinct disconnection I had between my attraction for men and recognising I was gay, and then that torturous decision about when to actually come out. Uh, today, it was reported in the press that, um, that, that you said you felt as though people were forcing you uh, to come out of the closet when you didn't even know yourself. I didn't really, or at least I wasn't sure. How long before you finally came out did you actually realise that, that, that you were gay? Um, it, well, a long time before. I knew when I was um, in my teens. Uh, and it was, it was just, I, and, and the reason I, I did say that was I was asked about it when I was very young. I was probably 15 or 16 at the time. Uh, Which is wrong. Yeah, it Which is, is wrong. It's really so wrong to sexualize no, it's a true. child. Yeah. And yeah. This is this is the issue. Um, and so because I kind of I told that lie, I didn't want to go back on that mm -hmm. as well. And I think as well, if I had a little bit more time uh, when I was younger, I would have come out. Um, and because it, I would have been comfortable with that as well. Uh, but because I I told that lie, I was kind of trying to suppress that part. Of me, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was difficult. Um, so, so that question back when you were fourteen basically impacted almost the next sort of twelve years of your life in some respects. Is that yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and and that's why I think you know we're all making the same point around you know why we don't push people to come out. Yeah. Um, you know, it's. A really, and it feels like it's you know this huge thing for you, and it is for each person. But it feels like you you have to come out to the world, and for each person that is what it's like because it's your friends, it's your peers. You don't know how you're going to be judged. It's a new, uh, it's kind of a new life for you as well. And you know, for me, when when I did come out, um, it was amazing to have such a kind of warm embrace from people. And I also I, I loved the most people's reaction was, okay, that's great, we really don't care. And I think that probably offers, you know, a really great indication of the maturity that we have in Australia towards us. Um, and, you know, it's really nice to kind of know that uh, when you're being that kind of honest and open, that people do accept you. And appreciate it. Yeah. <clears throat> so at what point, 14 months you had that question, and at what point did you sort of decide, well, I really need to do this, and why? Well, I, um, I hadn't really thought of it too much about coming out, um, or I, I hadn't thought of it when it was a reality that I, I might be doing it. I thought, oh, what would it be like? Um, but I hadn't gone through, oh, will I do this? But from the moment when I decided that I would, um, I put together a list of people that I, I wanted to tell, and it was a very short list. Uh, it was two of my friends and my uh, my sister and my parents, and I was going to space it out over a couple of weeks. And then it was like I finally kind of found the courage to do it, and I decided one after the other. It was like kind of booking people people in. Um, but I also at that time I I made the decision that if I'm I'm coming out to you know friends and family, I'm coming out to everyone. It's not. You know, it's something that you know I just tell some people around me. Uh, it was actually telling everyone. Great. And then, I mean, following the bullying theme that was reported in the press today, that you're heading up the ABC series on bullying and that you were bullied. 
it's kind of it's difficult, I think, for us to appreciate, you know, given your success and your stature, that, that, that you, even you, could be um, actually susceptible to bullying. You, what, can you just talk a little bit about, about that? Well, I mean, I was a, I was bullied a little bit, but, um, and I, I'm looking at the show and I'm looking at the kids that are being bullied and the, their issues are a lot more serious than what mine ever were. Um, but, you know, no one's immune to that. Uh, and you, it, it's, it's one of those things, growing up, you're just trying to fit in. Uh, and when, you know, I was even picked on for being good at sport, um, you know, the opposite to what a lot of kids might be bullied for. Um, kind of tall puppy syndrome? Yeah, kind of, I think so. I think that's kind of left over kind of thing, but it becomes okay to pick on people that are successful. Um, and I, I think, you know, it's kind of time for us to let go of those things. These, these issues are affecting uh, one in four kids in school now. 80% of the people, are they bystanders, don't know what to say, don't know what to do. Uh, and, you know, in, in making something like this, you, you uh, really want to help those kids out. Uh, and it's partly because you can see yourself in those kids. Uh, and it's why... I guess I, I've tried to be more active in this space as well and trying to, you know, make uh, sport, uh, you know, a really positive experience that I had, uh, but I want it to be a lot easier for the next athletes that go through as well. <laughs> so, sorry, next question. Buzz. Hi, yes, I just would like to know, as incredible people that have achieved some remarkable successes, what are perhaps some of the pitfalls or blind spots that you noticed while you were achieving that success that you could recommend to people perhaps on their way there? Is that directly on in, in anybody? anybody? <laughs> no blind spots? Oh, there's so many. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay. Uh, I think it's. I think one of the most important things in, in sport, and I guess this is true for life, it's having the right kind of mentors along the way. I was really fortunate in, in swimming that I, I did have that. Uh, but I, someone said to me that you should spend a third of your time with people that you admire, that uh, perhaps at a different stage, that are perhaps a little bit better than you see yourself as being at that time. A third of people that are, uh, of your time, sorry, with people that are uh, less advantageous than what you are, and a third with your peers, which are people at the same level. So it's looking for other people in other industries that you really look up to, and I think if you're inspired by those people, that's kind of the way to be able to avoid those pitfalls. And it's the examples that you find in, in others. Why are you laughing at me, Dan? Because no one was better than you. <laughs> <laughs> I think Amy was talking about sort of a, it was a, it was a life, it was a, a life um, um, model, model. My question is, um, and welcome to the family here. Um, my question is, um, <laughs> that's good, Amy. Um, so, we've got a bunch of elite athletes here, which is fantastic. And I hope we've got a bunch of um, amateur sports people in, in the audience. Do you sometimes feel as, as um, athletes that there's a pressure, uh, overt or covert, for somehow you to be uh, figureheads for the gay and lesbian community in total, not just the sporting community? Um, you know, because you've got, a, you've got a, a, a profile and that somehow you're out there to speak for us because we're basically voiceless. And that's to anybody. Um, yes, I think in some ways there is there's an expectation uh, around that you will be the voice of, a, of this group, which none of us can do. Uh, this is made up of, of many voices. Uh, and I'm very new to this and new at uh, talking about these things as well, and I don't have the experience. Uh, and I think that was a really good point. If you're going to talk about these issues, if you're going to become an advocate, you need to, to do your homework. Uh, and, but I think, you know, more broadly, we, we often look at our athletes uh, and we project onto them that we want them to be the role model uh, for the community. And it's something that you, you don't get a choice. Uh, you know, that's been given to you and you try and do a good job with it. Uh, you try and represent 
the values of the society that you come from. And I think that's a really beautiful thing and a powerful thing that, that athletes can do. Uh, but with that comes a lot of responsibility. Uh, so we do try. Uh, and yeah. does anyone want to continue? Yeah. I, I, my um, philosophy around uh, being a role model is as soon as anybody looks up to you, you automatically become a role model whether you like whether you'd like it or not. And so you can choose to accept that and embrace that and be a good role model or you can choose to not let that change your behaviour and just behave how you want and potentially be a bad role model. And I think that there are not enough good role models in the world and so that's kind of what motivates me to be a better person, not to be perfect because that's unrealistic. Um, fuck, I've made some mistakes. <laughs> Recovering drug addict, you know, like... Um, but. It was, but it's learning from those mistakes and being honest about them and then uh, modifying your behaviour and, and just living your life as authentically and, um, and yeah, just trying to be the best, generally the best person you can be and, and that's what I've tried to do and, and I'm really, really proud of being um, part of this community and, um, you know, I've, I've never made it my, my one identifying characteristic but as soon as anybody, you know, makes that association, I put my hand up and say, yes, I'm fucking, I'm queer as, and I, you know, and that's, um, I'm so proud of that, and I'm so proud of my community and the support that they give me and the, the unconditional love that they give me, and, um, and I want that for the whole world. Great, and so look, just to wrap up, it sounds like that.